what I can tell you is uh, it has real, tangible, and in some cases drastic effects um, in terms of what we can do as teachers or in a district um, inside the classroom. Uh, it has a real human cost in terms of influencing the life chances of the students who either get that, you know, that insulation and that, that, that propping up of having, you know, the coffers full to be able to fund and, and keep the teachers there who want to be there. In terms, and, and then those who come from a high poverty or low wealth environment where there's proven to be trouble keeping teachers there for obvious reasons, high turnover, instability, that does affect student outcomes. And I think, what's, what's the gap? I think it's like between the counties that are the wealthiest and the counties that are the, uh, uh, have the lowest wealth, it's like a, a gap of like almost two and a half thousand dollars in, in spending per pupil. That's huge. Um, that's just a number, but in terms of tangible results, that's the difference between a kid having a teacher who's talented, who's committed to their job, who stays out of school for a long time, who's a figure, right, who can kind of reach into that child's life and be able to prop them up and push them along, and a person who experiences high teacher turnover where they don't have the resources, the academic resources, the uh, social emotional supports, who has the same potential as that other student but suddenly doesn't get the same thrust into you know a career field or the same sort of options as, as a child going into the other district. That's a problem and that's the definition of disparity, the definition of inequity. Somehow, I'm not a politician, but somehow that has to be balanced out. Because, um, I mean, there's a real problem there. The solution is not one that I have the answer to. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the students, uh, one thing I always appreciate about James Ford is, is he always looks at this through a student lens. And, um, and I think whatever debates we're having about funding and equity, um, and we should be having those debates, uh, needs to be through the lens of our students. And, and particularly our highest need students, um, you know, um, whether it be um, uh, Warren County, where my wife is from, very high need area, similar to Edgecombe, uh, have, uh, very rural, or a place like, uh, you know, some of the high, or Garinger High School, where, where James uh, is a teacher. Um, it is not the same, I think. You know, I've taught in the South Bronx. I understand the difference between, you know, places I went to school and, and what the, in the South Bronx. And what I would say is that, um, in the state of North Carolina in terms of the dollars and cents of this, um, and, and this is actually important when we talk about national teacher salaries and you know all this debate about teacher pay, is that um, much of the education investment, whether it be teacher pay or, or coming from the state, is largely coming from the state. Um, in places like Tennessee, um, or some of our, our neighbors, our statewide neighbors, it's all based on those property values, right? Um, and so this has been going on for decades in North Carolina and every other and, and most other states. Is the states with the high property values? Um, they contract the teachers over time. I mean, this this idea of having um, so to use the Edgecombe um, and Orange example. Um, uh, you know, I think there's resentment on a part of, of those Edgecombe superintendents because they sometimes serve as um, a training ground. Uh, the teachers will teach there because that's where they can get a job for four or five years, and then they'll go to places like Wake and Orange because they pay more because property values are higher. Um, and, and there's lots of you know on both sides of this debate about whether we should have more local control or less lo you know more more you know district taxes. I, I think we all need to unite around this around this issue and make targeted investments in what matter most. And and, and what I would just end on is. A kid growing up in Edgecombe does not have the same opportunities, definitively, as a kid growing up in, uh, you know, a high wealth um, district. And that isn't to say, you know, I'm not. And, and we ought to be making those investments uh, based on that. Uh, and, and that's what I would, I would say on that piece.